and there's a little misconception between the productive life and the lifespan because people uh, usually cows in the US or heifers in the US cap around two years. So the total lifespan should be around. So the average in the US nowadays is something between 2.5 and 4 productive life. And the average, it's around like 3.6, 3.5. host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Marcos Marconis. Uh, he's a native of Brazil. I met him down there many, many years ago. He's currently a professor of uh, dairy cattle nutrition and management at Washington State University out at Pullman. His research areas include nutritional effects on environmental impact and sustainability. Marcos, welcome to the Black Belt. Thank you, Bill. I'm glad to be here. It's good to, good to see you again. Um, a few years ago, you co-authored a paper about the productive lifespan of dairy cattle. Uh, it's a good, good review. And I guess to start off with, what, what's the average product, well, defined productive lifespan? And then what, what is it in the U.S. or North America? Yeah, so first we need to understand that like a productive lifespan is from the moment the cow calves the first time until you kind of end her last lactation. Um, and there's a little misconception between the productive life and the lifespan because people uh, usually cows in the U.S. or heifers in the U.S. cap around two years. So the total lifespan should be around. So the average in the U.S. nowadays is something between 2.5 and 4 productive life. And the average, it's around like 3.6, 3.5. And so total total lifespan uh, two years uh, added to that um, response. What we used to say is they they stay around two or three lactations. That's essentially tack, tack in the dry period, and that's the productive life then. Correct, correct. Um, has it changed much? Again, let's concentrate on North America or, or, or intensive dairy industry. Has it changed much over the last several years or decades over the last several years it has changed it has been reducing over time uh and now uh for the past five to ten years there has been a lot of focus on increasing or improving the lifespan or productive lifespan of those cows past studies or the recent studies i guess have shown that the um, the most productive or the most economically or profitable cow is the cow that will reach around four to five lactations without major health issues. Okay. So that's the most profitable cow. So now farmers are uh, more, uh, I guess, say, inclined to make everything possible so that cow will prolong her life. So I guess now we're having like more care about health issues, especially uh, feet or hoof uh, issues. And... Mastitis was always an issue, but I think this is a little more focused now that the studies show that the most productive cow is that cow between four and five lactations. And that, that's a, a lot longer than what it is. It is. So what, what are some main, the big picture things that could, could affect lifespan, increase productive lifespan? Yeah, so the main reasons for cooling cows are like uh, basically uh, dying uh, for natural causes or for uh, accidents or injuries. Um, that's not the main, the main one is reproduction. That's the main one, uh, regardless if you are here or if you're in Europe or in other countries, reproduction plays the major part. So I guess just getting that cow pregnant is the, the, the main issue. Um, uh, we have been proving quite a lot, uh, in the past few years with the new technologies available for reproduction. Um, I guess double offsync has been playing a very good um, uh, play in this game. And also the automatic detectors, or collars or pedometers, um, high productive cows, they don't have as much like heat signs as low producing cows. So those technologies um, for reproduction have been proving uh, quite a while, uh, quite a lot, the, the productive life. So I guess... I was mentioning how that changed in the past several years that has been declining, but over the, I would say, five years, that has been kind of trending towards up 
because of the addition of these new technologies of reproduction and reproduction is the major cause um, of cooling. Um, we might have some diseases as well, like mastitis, uh, lameness. They also play a good part. Uh, but I guess the major player it is still uh, reproduction on keeping those guys, uh, those cows alive. Do, do you think the the repro is is mostly a management type problem or a, or nutrition, or if it is nutrition has an impact? What what can can people do to use nutrition to improve reproduction? Yeah, so um, n- uh, reproduction is a low heritability trait, right? That means that uh, the environmental everything, including nutrition and how you treat your cows, plays a, always a big part on on when you need to improve that trait. Uh, there are some um, recent studies, especially uh, with uh, specific fatty acids or improving the cow, the overall rooming environment, especially the the also the new nutrition um, um, tra- transition factors, right? To get that cow to uh, return cyclicity earlier, um, that will also uh, sometimes give the cow an, one additional chance or uh, to reproduce. So yes, I think we have several uh, nutrition strategies that can um, work together with those technology of reproduction to make that cow um, get pregnant faster or easier. Um, especially as we deal way more with SARA, subacute ruminant acidosis or ketosis or uh, any of those like major transition uh, metabolic diseases that is linked to specific, specific, more specifically with nutrition. But not only nutrition, Bill, also other uh, diseases we know much better. For now, uh, for instance, metritis is a disease that impacts quite a lot reproduction that in the past we used to identify that only like maybe 10, 20 days after that disease was diagnosed. Now we can have early diagnosis of those kind of disease. Mm-hmm. So it's a, a little bit of everything. So as reproduction, uh, again, it's it's made, uh, it's a, a player that is major majorly detected or influenced by the environment, both nutrition and how you treat that cow will influence the, that cooling rate. Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M, the best in-class rumen-protected methionine product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from their components, and maintain the lifetime performance of their herds. For more product information and to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids, go to milkpay.com. To wrap up here, you know, there's some new, not really new anymore, but we have sex semen. We have a lot of crop, a lot more crossbreds. Do you think that's going to affect the the economic optimal lifespan, productive lifespan of these cows? Um, my opinion is that it will. Uh, in the past, what we used to do is we used to uh, inseminate or breed our heifers and maybe first lactating cows with sexed semen. With the crossbred, what we're doing now, uh, most farms are basically not using conventional semen anymore. So they are uh, keep breeding heifers, first lactating cows, and they're very big uh, or very good um, second and three plus lactations with sexed semen. And then you, instead of using conventional semen, you, we're using beef semen. That means that we're using more sexed semen than we used to be or we used to do. And the sexed semen is less efficient than the conventional semen. So that may lead to more breedings per cow to get the cow pregnant and the cooling risk uh, might uh, increase a little bit. So um, again, that will change your uh, a little bit how we calculate the, the op- optimum. Okay. But again, as the beef semen plays a big part in the economics of a dairy now, uh, nowadays, um, we'll have to... Uh, uh, step back a little bit and redo all those calculations based on this new system. But it will, again, the reproduction indexes will drop a little bit once we're using more sex testing. Well, great. This has been been interesting. Thank, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Bill.